before going to start with the formation of the chemical bond i just want to make you aware of the lewis rules because we need to use these rules while forming the bonds so the first rule is that that in the bond formation only valence electrons are going to participate right suppose i write a configuration for um, this thing sodium you know that we need to write like this or we can write the configuration like this for the sodium we know that so in both the cases the outermost electron is one and even here the outermost electron is one so that means only the valence electrons that means the valence shell electrons are going to participate in the bond formation that means only the one electron is going to be part going to participate the inner shells they are actually well protected the inner shell electrons are actually well protected and they don't participate in any kind of bond formation likewise we need to represent these valence electrons and how we represent these valence electrons that means the electrons which are going to participate in the bond formation they are uh, represented by the dots or the uh, crosses suppose if i say uh, an atom has the one valence electron you need to show in this way right if it has a two valence electron you can show it this way if it has a three valence electron you can show in this way if it has a four you can show in this way five like this six like this seven like this and eight you need to show in this way by showing this by like by making you know that how we are show we are showing these electron is just to make you aware that you don't need to distribute all the electrons like this because some of the students what they do they just decorate the atom with the electrons so no it's wrong right you need to arrange the electrons in a specific order so that anybody who is just looking at your bond should be aware that how many electrons are actually participating in this bond and you know that one more reason is that because by looking at these dots you can just have the idea for the valence electrons like if i say that this atom has two dots so it should strike your mind that uh, how many valence electron it possess obviously it has two dot, uh, two electrons because the number of dots actually represent the number of valence electron so this is what the, the rules which we need to follow the first is that the only the valence electrons are going to participate second is that inner shell electrons will remain unaffected right third is that we need to show this valence electrons by putting dots or the crosses fourth what information do we get from the valence electrons we need to get uh, to know that how what is the valency or what are the number of the valence electrons so by just looking at the dots we can have an idea for that so this is what is the lewis rule now we are just going to use this rule and to uh, in order to show you that what how we can form the bond so likewise we have two types of bond as i told you that the uh, transfer of electron is the ionic bond and the gain of uh, sorry the sharing of electron is nothing but the covalent bond right so i'm just going to show you one ionic bond suppose i have sodium and chlorine so if somebody asked me to form a bond between sodium and chlorine how i'm going to form it the first step is that i need to write their atomic number right so i've done i'm i've just written the atomic number for you second is that i need to write the configuration now the third step is that i just want to know that what the valence electrons are going to participate so here one is going to participate here seven and we know that the elements which have one two three valence electron they are considered as metal and which have four five six seven they are considered as non metals and we also know that the bond strictly formed between metal and non metal is ionic because here one has an ability to donate an electron and other has an ability to gain an electron right so you are going to start with the metal one so this is my metal how many electrons one the only one electron is going to participate so what it is going to do it is going to lose one electrons and after losing it form a positively charged ion right likewise chlorine it possess seven electrons so i have drawn a seven dots it needs one electron to complete octet so it accepts one and form the chloride ion so what is my result my result is that sodium with one electron when combined with seven electrons of the chlorine it just forms sodium ion and the chloride ion and when i criss crossed what do i get i get nacl so this is my ionic bond so this is the one method to represent an ionic bond the other is that sodium and chlorine i'm going to draw the dots and sodium has one dot so here i'm just going to put an arrow and in order to show that uh, how like which atom donates an electron and which atom gains an electron 
and as you know that metal is going to donate so I just write that this electron this electron is given by this so as a result what do I have I have this positive and I have this negative again crisscross and I get MSc but according to me you know that that this method is the best one to show the bond formation because here you get a full detail actually right one more example I want to show you in order to make you understand one more concept suppose I told you to make a bond between aluminium and oxygen so I'm going to write the atomic number I'm going to write the configuration you all know how to do that now aluminium has three electrons so how many electrons the aluminium has to lose obviously it has to lose three electrons so this is what I'm losing making it lose three electrons and after losing it acquires three positive because the number of electrons an atom lose the, the it is equal to the positive charge it gets right now oxygen it has six electrons it is going to get two electrons and it is for it is forming O2 negative so what result I have here aluminium initially with three electrons oxygen initially with six electrons is forming Al3 positive and O2 negative after doing crisscross what do I get I get Al2 O3 so that means in this case two aluminium is combining with three oxygen so I'm not going to disturb these two three steps I'm just going to put here two aluminium and three oxygen right so by doing so we just get a clear idea that uh, six electrons are denoted by two aluminium and likewise three oxygen are, are uh, taking that uh, six electrons and after that we need to we have achieved a stable bond of Al2O3 so this is how you need to make an ionic bond but when we talk about covalent so in covalent bond what we have to show we have to show a sharing of electrons suppose I say that uh, this is my I want to make a chlorine molecule so we know that in chlorine molecule one chlorine combines with another chlorine and they have they are just deprived of one electron they have seven electrons so this is what I am showing here again for this also it is the same thing so as they are deprived of only one electron they need to share only one electron so you are going to put that electron in mid of them right so what is there these seven electrons and it is sharing this one electron again it has a seven, seven electron it is sharing one electron so as a result they get a single bond between them so this is a bond which is formed between Cl2 that is by the mutual sharing of electrons likewise we get to see in uh, this thing CH4 as well so in this uh, you, as you can see there are five atoms so that means the one which has uh, more elect which is more electronegative is going to occupy a central position so here is my C I will surround it with four hydrogens as we know that carbon has six electron and hydrogen has one so configuration two four again one so that means hydrogen has only one electron and as we know that for uh, this thing for being uh, for to attain stability they need only one electron because they actually have a duplet structure that means tendency to attain two electrons in outermost shell because when they will gain one electron one is already there one they will gain and their first shell will have two electrons and we know that the first shell gets stable when an atom has two electrons right so this carbon has four now and it has to arrange these four electrons in such a way that each hydrogen gets the same electron so it is just arranging in this manner so what happens this hydrogen gets stable this gets stable this gets stable this gets stable so all four hydrogens get stable and likewise this share all electrons and it forms a stable covalent bond that is with a single bond so this is how you are going to make the covalent bond just by showing the mutual sharing and here you need to show that one has uh, one has already like one is just uh, making its electron go right and the other is just accepting that electron so this is what is the ionic bond that is the transfer of electron and the mutual sharing is the covalent bond we will be just now starting with a few more examples I will just make you uh, like uh, well versed that how it, you need to make uh, an ionic bond or the covalent bond keep looking at the board because I am just going to explain you with many more examples.